Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to be looking at something very special. This is the McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman Ultimate Movie Collection. This consists of six different movie Batman figures. Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, Christian Bale, Ben Affleck, and Robert Pattinson. But where's the Adam West? No love for him in this set. I pre-ordered this thing from the McFarlane Toy Store. Seems like forever ago. It sold out quick. Very, very hot popular item. This is McFarland's first six pack they've ever done. So let's take a look at the packaging. And it is a beast. Giant box. As you can see, at the top here, we have Warner Brothers 100th anniversary celebrating every story. Ages 12 plus. The Batman single. Batman Ultimate Movie Collection. We have the 89 film, 95, 97. 2008, uh, what is that, 2015, and then 2022, I believe. DC Multiverse includes Batman figures and Bat Signal. This is a really cool set. You get each of the different actors represented in action figure form, plus a Bat Signal to represent each and every one of them. One side of the package, Batman Ultimate Movie Collection. Other side includes Batman figures and Bat Signal. Warner Brothers 100th anniversary. <laughs> On the back side, we have a little cityscape. And then here are the six different Batman figures and their corresponding logos. At the bottom, a bunch of credits. And there is the barcode in case that helps anybody. So this is their ultimate movie collection set. And here's some Velcro as I open it up. Bam, here it is in all of its glory. Six Batman figures, four Bat Signals, looks like display stands and collector's cards. So without further ado, let's open it up. And of course, I did get two of these sets, one of which to open and enjoy, and one to keep unopened in my complete Batman-related unopened action figure collection. All right, now that we have these figures out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. Now they don't come with any traditional accessories, and that is a big complaint I have about this set. Each one of these Batman figures has two fisted hands, no gripping hands, no accessories, no batarangs, no grapple launchers, no nothing. That's something they would have definitely benefited from. Each figure has a collector's card, a display stand, and then of course we have this awesome bat signal in the middle. And it has four different interchangeable bat symbols for the front. One representing each of the different film franchises. I think that is just awesome. In this video, we're going to take a look at each of the figures individually. We'll check out their lack of accessories, height, and articulation. We'll compare them with a bunch of other relevant Batman action figures from each of the different films. So, let's go ahead and do this in release order. Let's start off with Michael Keaton, 1989 Batman. When we get through all six Batman figures, we'll check out the best signal. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I want to give a huge shout out to my cousin Jordan. My camera's broken right now. Something's wrong with the lens. I'll have a replacement in the near future. But I asked him if I could borrow his camera. And he said yes with no hesitation. Much appreciated. And normally when I review a Batman figure, I use the DC Direct Batman the Amazing Series Batcave. But with this many Batman figures... We're going to need a bigger cave. Before we look at the Michael Keaton Batman figure, let's check out their accessories. And it's a bare bone minimum on accessories, display stand, collector's card, that's all these figures get. Of course you do have the bat signal, which is a very impressive accessory, but it's not really for each one individually. It's something that can be shared between any of your Batman figures. So they come with six different display stands. Tupo McFarland stand, black perfect circle, it says DC on the bottom, it's got one peg for the pegos on his feet. Very thin, very basic, but it definitely gets the job done. Then let's look at their collector's cards. It's pretty cool they each come with a collector's card. The Michael Keaton Batman with the Batmobile didn't have one. So we finally have one for that action figure. Collector's card for each of the six different figures. Although there are some discrepancies here. I see the Ben Affleck Batman is in the Batman vs Superman suit. The standard bat suit he wears. Not in the tactical suit from Zack Snyder's Justice League. I would have much rather had the Batman vs Superman suit. But... You know, little tease here by McFarlane. Hopefully that's coming in the future. And then here's the back side of all those collector's cards. Each one has a unique description. So here's the Michael Keaton Batman. He's from the 1989 live-action film labeled Batman. 
This film came out when I was five years old. I remember seeing it in theaters. It left a big impact with me. It's part of why I'm a huge Batman fan that I am today. This is the first dark, serious, and gritty Batman movie ever made. It kind of broke the stigma of the 1966 films. Michael Keaton was not who you'd expect to be cast as Batman, but they've done that numerous times in the Batman franchise. Cast someone a role that didn't seem like it would work out, but they ended up surpassing your expectations, and he damn sure did. Now, this is the second Michael Keaton Batman figure McFarlane was made. The first one is very similar to this, and it's an Amazon exclusive that came with the Batmobile. And my god, that Batmobile is fantastic. But right now we're just looking at the figures. So let's take a look. Starting with his head here. The cowl, it looks pretty good. The ears, a good length. He's got a little bit of personality and sculpting above the brow. The mouth, the chin. They did an excellent job. It does scream Michael Keaton. I like the eyes. Now, one thing I don't like is just how sort of thin or narrow the cowl gets as it goes further down. Most of you guys remember, in the 1989 Batman film, he could not turn his head. He had to turn his entire body to look left or right. And I kind of feel like they shouldn't have given him neck articulation. And even if they did, it shouldn't get thinner going down. It kind of makes me think of the Christian Bale Dark Knight cowl, the way it's sort of shaped. I personally feel like they could have made the head of the neck one solid piece. You're telling me they can do that with the Hush Batman, that nobody wanted to be done that way, but they can't do it with the Michael Keaton Batman that makes perfect sense that way. It should be a sleek, sort of smooth line between the cowl and the neck going down to sort of this part here. Instead, it kind of breaks up the aesthetic. I appreciate as much articulation as possible, but I think in this case, they could have done without the neck articulation, or at least put it under the cowl like NECA did. Still, it does look good for what it is, but that does kind of bother me. It makes me think, I don't know, it just screams sort of the Christian Bale cowl from some points of view. Still, it's a very good looking figure. They got the likeness pretty spot on. Going further down, we have the bat signal. His symbol on his chest is unique. It has the extra points in the bottom. Very specific and unique to the 1989 film. As we go further down, he's got the sculpted abs, the armor there. In the film, it was sort of bulletproof, one solid piece. Now, it has an ab crunch in here, and personally, I think they could have done without the ab crunch and made it one solid piece. Now, like I said, I want as much articulation as possible, but this figure is very unique. It's very, very unique the way it was done in the film. He could not move, he could not turn very well. He had to move his entire body to look from side to side. And as good as this looks here, it can look very bad very easily when you sort of rotate and use the articulation. That just looks like a big jumbled mess with the abs there. I don't know. I got mixed feelings whether it should or shouldn't have the ab crunch. But the neck, I think it should have been handled differently. He's got double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. His belt looks fantastic. It's done with sort of a copper type color. He's got the fins here. He's got the sort of shin armor. I think the boots, the shoes look very good. This part here, Scream 1989 film. I feel like the shin armor maybe should be a little more prominent, a little bigger. He's got the cloth soft goods cape and you can totally outstretch it just like he did in the 89 film. Looks excellent. The figure itself looks great. There's a couple spots that are maybe a little bit basic, but as a whole, I think they nailed it. It looks good. Neck thing does bother me though. Just can't believe they could do the Hush Batman neck and head one solid piece, but they couldn't do it to Keaton Batman. That was a big mistake. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. I totally see Michael Keaton in there. I don't know about you guys. They did a pretty good job. And as we go further down, a closer look at the bat symbol on his chest. Unique to 1989. Then he has his sort of ab armor here. And like I said, I, I have mixed feelings. I feel like it should be one solid piece and just have the waist articulation. The skull can just be broken up so easily and look weird. And to be accurate to the film, I'd be totally cool with just skipping the ab crunch altogether on this guy, the torso cut. But I do have mixed feelings. I want as much articulation as possible. But the 1989 Batman, he just could not move that well in the film. So. 
I think it would have been kind of true to the film to cape the neck and ab crunch out. I do hope they continue making these movie Batman figures. They seem to be very popular and selling out everywhere. I hope they give us a Michael Keaton in his Batman Returns suit. That way we can have Michael Keaton from the 1989 film, the Batman Returns film, and the Flash film. We have two of the three already. I would also like to see an unmasked version of this Batman with the younger Michael Keaton head. I wouldn't mind seeing a battle damage version from the end of the film. And you know eventually they're going to give this guy a single release with a plastic cape. At least that would be my speculation. Maybe we'll get a 1989 wave in the future. Now they've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his lack of accessories. Now let's check out his height from bottom to the top of his head, standing at about 7.25 inches tall, which can translate to about 18 and a half centimeters. And if you go to the top of the ears, about 7.6 inches tall. Now for his articulation. So, start with his head here, and I hate to complain, but personally, I think they should have handled the neck very differently. So his head can move from side to side, can look up about that far, down a very good amount, can tilt his head from one side to the other, it does look kind of weird seeing the 89 Batman do this, but in some ways it's also kind of refreshing and cool. Shoulders, a ball joint goes out a little bit more than 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got a butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest, increasing the range of motion and covering the large gap that would be there. A bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows, they go all the way in. His wrist can rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. In his torso, he's got an ab crunch or sort of torso ball joint, rotate around, forward and back. Now, if you pull it all the way up, you can see that gap and that looks absolutely hideous. He's got another ball joint in his waist, rotate around, forward and back. Between the two, very wide range of motion in his torso area. This gap here is really bothering me though. Legs, complete does the splits. Not a ball joint, McFarland style hip joints. Rotation is pretty much non-existent. Legs go forward about that far, back not much. Double jointed knees below that. And then his ankle, forward and back. Rotate, tilt, rock, and of course, to articulation. And now, let's check them out with some other Michael Keaton Batman figures. We'll start off with the McFarland versions. Here's this movie ultimate six pack Michael Keaton on the left next to the Amazon exclusive Batman Batmobile Batman on the right. They're essentially the same figure, same sculpt, same articulation, but some minor paint differences. As you can see, the head is pretty much the same. The bat symbol is a little bit different. This new one is yellow. The old one is sort of a gold color going further down. The belts are a little bit different. His is the same as the symbol kind of gold. His is a little bit more gold. I don't know, his has more of a coppery tone on the Amazon one. I believe this one feels more accurate to the film. The yellow, the belt. Beyond that, they're pretty much exactly the same, but at least there are some differences. I definitely appreciate that. And here he is, next to the Flash movie Michael Keaton Batman. Suit is different from the 89 film suit. Considerably different. Figure is kind of similar. Head sculpt's different. The bet symbol's different. They both have a cloth soft goods cape. They're both fantastic figures, but I'm going to have to give it up to the 89 version. That is my version of Michael Keaton Batman. They did make two versions of the Flash Michael Keaton Batman. One with mask on and one unmasked. I bought an extra one of the unmasked Michael Keaton Batman so I could do a head swap and get an older Michael Keaton in civilian attire. I think it worked out pretty good. And I really hope they do the same treatment with the 89 version, make a younger unmasked Michael Keaton. That way I can do the same thing and have a younger Bruce Wayne in civilian attire. Now I wanted to check him out next to the NECA 1989 Michael Keaton Batman. And I love this NECA figure. I think he looks phenomenal. Yes, I've read all the complaints out there. He's underarticulated. The head is too big, etc. And I'm not necessarily going to argue those points. They're valid. The head looks really big next to this McFarland version, but I never really thought the head was too big until I put him next to the McFarland version. Now, if you think about it, back in the 89 film, the mask went on top of his head, and it did look a little bit too big in the film, almost looked like a guy in cosplay, which is exactly what Batman is. But personally, 
I think the NECA figure is much better than the McFarlane figure. There are pros and cons to each one. McFarlane definitely wins in the articulation department, but I'd say NECA wins in the sculpt, texture, and likeness department. Drop me a line in the comments below. Let me know what you think. But let's take a look at both of them first. So, starting with their heads. I mean, just look at this. What do you guys think? The sculpting with the ears, the brow on top of the eyes, the personality, the mouth, the sculpting, the painting. It's just far superior on NECA. Yes, the head seems maybe a little big next to McFarlane 1. But it's just so flat. He's got all the different texture on the cowl. It's just so smooth on this guy. They both look really good. But McFarland almost looks like a child toy next to the detail on the NECA version. I mean, look at the sculpt and detail on the cowl and the mouth. It's just much better on NECA. That's not to say McFarland's a bad figure. It's not. It's a great figure. And keep in mind, this guy cost 20 bucks back in the day. This guy cost 20 bucks now. Yeah, the bat symbol, very similar. The sort of ab armor, pretty similar. The belt, not too different. But just the sculpting, it's just a little better on the NECA one overall. Like I said, what do you guys think? But look at the two faces next to each other. You cannot say that McFarlane has a better paint and sculpt than NECA. I just, you can't say it. Look, look at them. They're both really nice figures. Love the McFarlane figure. But I love the NECA one even more. And NECA made three different versions of the 1989 Michael Keaton Batman. From left to right, we have the Kenner Homage Tech Shield Batman, then the standard 1989 Michael Keaton, and then the Nintendo Entertainment System version. And here he is, next to the Mezco 112 Collective version of Michael Keaton Batman. Now, this is an expensive figure, but I don't like him for a lot of different reasons. He probably has the best head and face sculpt. I'm not a fan of the sort of rubber bodysuit. I absolutely hate the cape. And my figure, I'm pretty sure he broke in the elbow. It's still connected because of the rubber suit. His accessories are amazing, but he's a pain in the ass to utilize properly. The head doesn't sit far enough down. The cowl sort of has a gap there. The magnet on mine was so strong that it actually came out of the head, had to glue it back in. It just has a slew of problems and it's a pain in the ass to use. Nice display piece, but I want more than that in an action figure. Then, here he is next to the SH Figure Arts Michael Keaton Batman. Not really a fan of this figure either. It's far too small. The flesh color looks just very plasticky. The cape also really sucks. Far too small. The detailing is just not that impressive, especially for an import figure like this. SH Figure Arts is making a Flash movie Michael Keaton. It looks pretty good. Not really sure when that's coming out, but you know I'm going to get one or two. Here are all the different officially licensed 6 and 7 inch scale Michael Keaton Batman figures. I believe I have all of them. You may notice I don't have the Beast Kingdom Michael Keaton Batman figure. That guy's 8 inches tall, and that's where I draw the line. I collect 6 inch scale to 7 inch scale and anything in between, but I won't collect 5 inch or 8 inch scale. Like I said, it's where I'm going to draw the line. Look at this. Michael motherfucking Keaton, the Batman. Here's this Batman, next to some Michael Keaton 1989 throwback Batman figures. We have the Mezco Sovereign Knight Onyx Batman. We have the Mattel DC Multiverse Toy Biz throwback Batman. And then the Mattel DC Universe Classics Wave 10 All Black Batman. These are definitely all sort of callbacks or homages to the Michael Keaton Batman. Here's this McFarlane Michael Keaton Batman, next to the Mattel DC Multiverse Michael Go Alfred. Michael Go was Alfred in Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin. The Mattel figure is a little bit taller than the Mattel line, which works perfect with the McFarlane stuff. He scales up quite nicely with this Michael Keaton Batman. And now, here's this Batman next to the Mattel signature collection, Danny DeVito Penguin. Michael Keaton did face off with the Danny DeVito Penguin at Batman Returns, but not in this costume. I hope we get a Batman Returns Batman and a Danny DeVito Penguin, as well as a Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman in a wave in the future. Fingers crossed. Here's this Michael Keaton Batman next to the appropriate Batmobile. This is the one that came in the Amazon 2-pack with the Michael Keaton Batman and Batmobile. And here he is, next to the older Toy Biz version of the Batmobile. This is more for 4-inch scale figures. Now for the second Batman. 
This is the Val Kilmer Batman from Batman Forever. Now, I personally would have preferred this to be in his original suit for the main part of the film. I believe it's normally nicknamed the Panther suit. But, instead, they chose to give him the sonar suit from the end of the film, after all the bat suits and bat cave was destroyed. I hope eventually McFarlane gives us both versions of the Val Kilmer Batman, but time will tell. So let's take a look. Starting with his face here. The chin looks pretty good. The lips look good. It does look like Val Kilmer from Batman Forever. He's got the center suit cowl. You can see it's got those lines below the ears. The larger bat symbol on the chest. No nipples on this guy. He's got similar bat symbol on the chest. Those signature abs, just like it looked in the movie. Double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. He's got the unique sort of fins for the sonar suit. Overall, it looks good. It looks really good, actually. I think the sculpting, very well done. Diaper looks good, the abs. Excellent job with this figure. His cape is similar to the 89, can stretch out very nicely. Really excited to have a Val Kilmer in the seven inch scale, but I do wish it was the other suit. Although I can see a lot of people would probably want the suit from the final fight at the end of the film. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. I think they absolutely nailed it with this one. The mouth, the lips, the cowl, the face. Screams Val Kilmer Batman from Batman Forever. Now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, standing at about 7.2 inches tall, which can translate to just over 18 centimeters. And if you go to the top of the ears, about 7.5 inches tall. Now for his articulation. Starting with his head, of course, it can rotate from side to side. He can look up about that far, down about that far, pretty nice. Tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders, the ball joint goes out just a tiny bit less than 90 degrees, up, down, around. Butterfly joint, just like the other figures. Bicep cut. Double jointed elbows. His wrists rotate. Got to be hinged as well. Ball joint is torso. Rotate around. Forward and back. Another one is waist. Rotate around. Forward and back. Between the two, very good range of motion. A little bit more out of the torso than the waist on this guy. Legs, complete does the splits. McFarlane style hip joints. Rotation. Not existent. Go forward about that far. Back, not much. Double jointed knees. And his ankle. Forward and back. Rotate. Tilt rock. To articulation. Here's this McFarlane Val Kilmer Batman. Next to the only other Val Kilmer Batman that I have. And the only other one they've made in the 6 and 7 inch scale. This is from the Mattel DC Multiverse line. The signature line. This one is in his main suit, the panther suit from the main part of the film. It's got the yellow oval around the bat symbol. But God, this figure looks like shit compared to the McFarlane one. Hopefully McFarlane will make this version of Val Kilmer as well. Time will tell. I do anticipate them doing a Batman Forever wave. We know they're doing a Batman and Robin wave. Batman Forever wave makes perfect sense. Batman, Robin, Two-Face, and the Riddler. Perfect set of four figures. And here he is. Next to the Mattel, Michael Go Alfred. Michael Go was Alfred in both the Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, and even the George Clooney films. Here's this Batman. Next to the Kenner, Batman Forever Batmobile. This is the only Batman Forever Batmobile they made. Unfortunately, it's for the 5 inch scale. Far too small for this figure. Now for the George Clooney Batman from Batman and Robin. Talk about a franchise killer. I never thought they would have made a George Clooney Batman in the 6 or 7 inch scale by any of the companies, and I'm happy they did. I didn't know how much I needed a George Clooney Batman until I had him in hand. Now unlike the Val Kilmer Batman, this one is done in its main suit from the majority of the film, not the suit at the end of the film. The suit he wore at the end of the film was sort of an anti-freeze suit, and it looked very similar to the sonar suit. I think it was a sonar suit, just repainted a little bit. And everyone shits all over George Clooney for being such a horrible Batman. But it wasn't his fault. George Clooney's actually a really good actor. If you've ever seen from Dust Till Dawn, he can be dark and serious. But the way he was directed in the film, what he was asked to do, 
he did the job he was paid for. So let's take a look. Starting with his face. Now, it doesn't scream George Clooney as much as the Val Kilmer Batman, but the cow looks pretty good. The chin actually does look very similar to George Clooney in the film. He's got the bat symbol on the chest, no yellow oval, but of course he has the infamous bat nipples. They included them. Can you believe it? Going further down, he's got the abs. He's got the belt with the same bat symbol. Now, I've seen people complaining that the diaper piece looks a little bit different than the rest of the figure, but that is nonsense, at least on mine. It looks very much the same shade. Double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. It does look like we have a lot of reuse for the Val Kilmer Batman on this guy, but a lot of new parts as well. Now, if you happen to have two of these guys, you could probably mix and match and then get George Clooney in the final fight suit as well as Val Kilmer in the earlier Panther suit, but it would require some work on the cowls. Still, it's very cool to have all these different versions of the sort of Burton-esque universe Batman. Just like the others, he has a fantastic cloth soft goods cape. Remember them showing this part off in the film. He does have a hole in his back. I don't know what the purpose of that is. Looks like he should fit some sort of backpack or something. I don't know. Maybe a future figure will reveal that. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Looking closer at his face, it actually looks pretty good like George Clooney. The mouth, the eyes, his eyes in the cowl. I watched the parts of the movie before doing this video, and it's pretty spot on. The likeness is excellent on all six of these figures. I would personally love to see Val Kilmer's earlier suit and George Clooney in his final suit. Now for his height, from bottom to the top of his head, standing right at about 7 inches tall, which could translate to just under 18 centimeters. And if you go to the top of the ears, about 7.4 inches tall. Now for his articulation. Start with his head, rotate side to side, up and down about that far, tilt his head from one side to the other, ball jointed shoulders, butterfly joint, although it's hidden pretty well on this guy, bicep cut, doesn't move very much, double jointed elbows, his wrist, rotate, hinged, Ball joint his torso, rotate around, forward and back. Another one is waist, rotate around, forward and back. Between the two, very good range of motion is torso area. Legs, complete as splits, McFarlane hip joints. The rotation's non existent. Legs go forward about that much. Back, not much. Double jointed knees. It's ankle, forward and back. Rotate, tilt, rock, and toe articulation. I wanted to see just how many parts they reuse between the George Clooney and Val Kilmer Batman figures. And surprisingly, there are very few reused parts. Obviously the heads are totally different. The torso, the stomach, the diaper, they're all different. The legs are even different. The only thing they seem to have reused is the arms. I also notice the Val Kilmer Batman is considerably taller than the George Clooney Batman, which is not exactly accurate. From my Google search, George Clooney is 5'11", Val Kilmer is 6' so there's a 1 inch difference. I'd say the action figures have a bigger difference than that. Here's the George Clooney Batman, next to Mattel Michael Go Alfred. Michael Go was George Clooney's Alfred as well. I have no other George Clooney figures, no other George Clooney Batman figures compared to and they've not made any in the 6 and 7 inch scale. Nobody wants to touch this guy, this movie. It's a franchise killer. But McFarlane decided to start with the worst of the Batman movies. I think that's very interesting, and I guarantee they're going to sell out. And here he is, next to the Kenner Batman and Robin Batmobile. Once again, this is for 5 inch scale figures. Far too small for this Batman. Now let's check out the Christian Bale Batman for the Dark Knight trilogy. He's wearing his Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises suit. I would love for them to make a Batman Begins suit. That's something that I've always wanted in the 7 inch scale. Yes, NECA makes one, but that figure is definitely subpar. This guy looks to be painted a little bit differently than the previously released McFarlane Dark Knight Batman. And of course, he has a cloth soft goods cape. So let's take a look. Starting with his face here. 
looks good. A sort of narrow window for the chin to stick out. Screams Christian Bale from the Dark Knight. He's got sculpting above the brow. Perfect. The ears kind of semi-long. Excellent job on the face. Going further down, he's got his armored suit. It's got gray, it's got black. It even has a little bit of sort of different texturing beneath the armor pieces. Large shoulder pads. They kind of move out of the way and don't obstruct the articulation too much. He's got that gold belt. His articulation is hidden very nicely under the different armor pieces. You can see the double sort of fins on his forearm. Double jointed elbow, double jointed knees. Paint job looks good. I think it looks better than the original release. Even has the sort of little knuckle sort of buster things on his hands there. He also has that little peg on his back. Not really sure why. Maybe it's for the original cape. And speaking of capes, this one also stretches out very nicely. He used to use that cape to glide a ton in the Dark Knight trilogy. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. It screams Christian Bale from the Dark Knight. All six of these figures look excellent. Face and head sculpts, very well done. Now let's check out his height. Bottom to the top of the head, about 7.25 inches tall, 18 and a half centimeters. Top of the ears, probably about 7.4 inches tall. Now for his articulation, Start with his head, rotate side to side. You can look up and down, pretty good amount. Tilt his head side to side. Shoulders on a ball joint. Like I said, the shoulder pads are soft. You can kind of go above the shoulder, give him a full 90 degree bend. Up, down, around, all the good stuff. Butterfly joint between the shoulder and chest area. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows. His wrists rotate and hinged as well. His torso, he's got a ball joint, rotate around, forward and back. Another one is waist, rotate around, forward and back. Between the two, pretty good range of motion is the torso area. Legs, complete of splits, McFarlane, hip joints, rotation, damn near non-existent. You go forward, about that much, back, not much. Double jointed knees, then his ankle, forward and back, rotate. Tilt rock, and of course, to articulation. Here he is, next to the previous version of McFarland's Dark Knight Batman. This guy was part of the collective build Bane from Dark Knight Rises Wave. Now, there are some differences, mainly with the paint job, but of course, this new one has a cloth soft goods cape, and the previous one has a plastic cape. Beyond that, they're pretty much the same figure. You can see the faces. Now, the paint job here. It's very similar. This guy has a lot of the same gray and black, but it's just done so much better on him. I can't even explain it. It's just sort of duller and flatter on him, and the black, gray, the different sort of pieces behind. It just seems a little bit more vibrant. Still, they both are fantastic figures. This guy has the gripping hand. This guy has two fisted hands. I'm sure you could swap them if you really want to. The little hole in the back is to accommodate the plastic cape. You can see it pegged in there. Both very nice figures. If you're a fan of cloth cape or plastic cape, we have one for each of you guys. McFarlane did also make a Jokerized version of the Dark Knight Batman. I'm not even sure what to say. It is one of my sort of least favorite Jokerized figures they've made. Still, kind of cool to have three different versions or interpretations of the Christian Bale Batman by McFarlane Toys. Here are all the different characters McFarlane has made from the Dark Knight trilogy. Scarecrow, Joker, Batman, Bane, and Two-Face. I really hope they make a Catwoman and a Batman Begins Batman. Yes, I would take them all. Ra's al Ghul, Gordon, Alfred, John Blake. But I'd say Catwoman and Batman Begins Batman would be my two most wanted by McFarlane. Here he is, next to a Soap Studios Dark Knight Batman. This figure sucks. Stay away from him. And here he is, with all three different versions of the Mafex Dark Knight Batman. We have the 1.0, the 2.0, and the 3.0. The 3.0 is excellent. The other ones, not so much. 
the 1.0 is awful. Then, next at the SH Figure Arts Dark Knight Batman. Pretty good, but too small for my tastes. And now, with a couple different Mattel Movie Masters Dark Knight Batman figures. Here he is, next to a NECA 7-inch scale Batman Begins Batman. This is the only Batman Begins Batman in the 7-inch scale, and I hope McFarlane makes one. Here he is, next to an older NECA Christian Bale figure from American Psycho. Here he is, next to a Soap Studios 112th scale Tumblr. This is probably the best Tumblr out there. Radio controlled, lights, all kind of features. It's a two-seater, but far too small for the McFarlane figures. And here, next to an older Mattel version of the Tumblr. This is a little bit smaller for five-inch scale figures. Here's a Batcave underneath Wayne Manor. We have some of the platforms there. The suit is currently underneath. The suit raises up as it prepares for Bruce Wayne's arrival. Bruce Wayne walks up to the suit, feels that thrill of anticipation just before he puts it on. Bruce puts on the suit and goes out to defend the streets of Gotham City. After he leaves, the suit closes up and retracts back into the ground. Here's Batman in a Batcave. This is by Extreme Sets, it's the 2.0. We have the Tumblr there, the Batcomputer. This Batcave looks pretty similar to the Batcave from Batman Begins but not so much from the Dark Knight. Still, pretty cool place to put this figure. And a closer look at this Batman with a nice background, the tumbler, the bat computer. Here's the same type of setting with the bat pod. And in the bat cave with his flying vehicle, the bat. Here's Batman with his entire armory of vehicles. Here's Batman on the Mattel Movie Master's bat pod. This bat pod is maybe just a tiny bit too small for him. But it looks pretty decent. This bat pod is slightly larger than the SH Figure Arts or the Mayfix version. And if you check it out, you can actually get his knees and feet to fit exactly like they're intended. I wish you could look up just a tiny bit more, but still, it's a very nice accessory for this Batman figure and display piece. Here's Batman meeting with Lieutenant Gordon on the GCPD rooftop. Here's Batman trapped on a catwalk, about to face Bane. He throws everything he's got at Bane but it's simply not enough. Bane proceeds to break the Batman. Bane has defeated Batman, but the Dark Knight shall rise. Now let's check him out, next to the Ben Affleck Batman. This is him in his tactical suit from Justice League or Zack Snyder's Justice League. Only difference is, this one doesn't have the goggles at all. I don't believe he ever actually looked like this in the movie. He either had the goggles on his eyes or goggles up over his forehead. I don't think he ever had the suit on with the goggles fully off. But still, I appreciate that it's a little bit different from what we got before. Now, I really wish it was Ben Affleck or Batfleck from the Batman vs. Superman in his regular suit. Everyone wants that from McFarlane. Please deliver. Rumor was that was going to be coming with this set. The collector's card implies that, but we got this one instead. So let's take a look. Start with his face. Like I said, no goggles. The cowl looks like it'd be from the regular suit. I really hope they make that. He's got the signature fat Ben Affleck bat symbol on the chest. Armor plates all over it. The silver pops compared to the black behind it. Very well done. You can see the fins there, also done in silver. It's got armor plates all over the suit. Belt, all black. Bunch of pouches. Double jointed knees. Double jointed elbows. Figure looks pretty good. Cloth soft goods cape stretches out almost as far as the other figures. Pretty nice. I'd say it's probably the best Ben Affleck head sculpt McFarland has made so far. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Say what you want about Ben Affleck as Batman. He made an excellent Batman. I love the short ears, big bruiser look. You watch that warehouse scene about Bruce Superman, and you tell me he's not a badass beast. Now let's check out his height. Bottom to the top of his head, 7.25 inches tall, 18 and a half centimeters. Top of the ears, probably about 7.4 inches tall, maybe a tiny bit shorter than that. And now for his articulation. Starting with his head, rotate side to side. You can look up that far, down that far, not bad. Tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders, ball joint goes out more than 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. Butterfly joint between the shoulder and chest. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows. His wrists, 
rotate, hinged. Ball joint is torso, rotate around, forward and back, although not much there, mostly rotation. Another one is waist, it's a lot tighter, rotate around, forward and back, between the two, good range of motion. Legs, a little bit tight there, go out about that far. McFarland style hip joints, rotation is pretty good on him. Legs go forward all the way, back not much, double jointed knees, and then his ankle forward and back, rotate, tilt rock, and toe articulation. Here he is, nicely standard version of Ben Affleck Batman from Zack Snyder's Justice League. The figures are very similar, head sculpt looks to be a little bit different. So, like I said, starting with the head. No goggles, goggles down. Personally, I prefer the goggles down versus the goggles up, but I do like the no goggles look as well. Paint job is a lot different. The silver pops a lot more in the new one. It's very dull on the older one. Even the bat symbol looks better. It is the same figure, but the paint job just makes a hell of a difference on these guys. This guy has a plastic cape. He has a soft goods cape. McFarlane has now made four different Ben Affleck Batman figures in the tactical suit. A little bit much. I'd much prefer to have the three different suits from Batman vs Superman to complement this guy, but I'll take what I can get. And just like the Michael Keaton Batman, I got an extra unmasked Ben Affleck Batman, threw it onto a suit of body, and have Ben Affleck Bruce Wayne in civilian attire. Although I will say this head sculpt does not look very much like Ben Affleck, but more so like a generic comic Bruce Wayne. And that works for me. McFarlane also made a Ben Affleck Batman for the Flash film. But the head sculpt is horrible. This isn't Batfleck. This is Horsefleck. Also, the color scheme is all wrong compared to the final product. Here he is, next to the Mezco 112 collective version of Ben Affleck Batman in his tactical suit. And here he is, next to the Mafex version. Then, next to the Mattel DC Multiverse version. And now... Next to the Mattel basic version. Here's this Batfleck. Next to the Mattel DC Multiverse. Batmobile from Justice League. This is part of the Mattel DC Multiverse line. And is probably the best Ben Affleck Batmobile out there. And here he is. Next to the ultimate radio controlled version. This one is bigger. But bigger doesn't always necessarily mean better. I'd say the other one looks considerably better. And is better scaled with the figures. Now to reenact a couple of scenes from the film. I'm going to start off by reenacting the tunnel scene. This Batman figure is in his tactical suit for the final battle of the film. Batman was in his regular suit in the tunnel scene, so I'm going to have to use this Batman to fill in. I really hope they offer a Ben Affleck Batman in his regular bat suit. That is my biggest want from this line. I've wanted a 7 inch version of that for a long time. Fingers are totally crossed. McFarlane could easily make a darker one for Justice League, and then, as they love their paint variations, they can make a lighter paint variation and label it a Batman vs Superman figure. Fingers crossed, big want I have, McFarlane please deliver. Our heroes take the Nightcrawler down into the tunnels. They're looking for Steppenwolf and his parademons. Steppenwolf here is interrogating the scientists and this janitor. He has the scent of the mother box on him. Our heroes look down from above. The Flash says, Boy, I really miss Superman right now. Cyborg's dad interrupts, and Steppenwolf can smell the mother box on him. Cyborg is the first to go in and save his dad. Cyborg swoops down to save his dad, and the pair demons get ready to shoot him. Wonder Woman drops down to save the day. And as Steppenwolf sees what's happening, Amazon! He challenges Wonder Woman to a fight. Then Batman and Flash end up coming down to join the fight. Flash pushing away the parademon. Batman tells Flash and Cyborg, just get these people out of here. Meanwhile, Wonder Woman is taking on Steppenwolf up top. And as things start to get hairy again, Batman calls for Alfred. Alfred, I need the Nightcrawler. Of course, Alfred's here in the Batcave at the Batcomputer. Diligently complies. And after a little while, Cyborg ends up taking over the Nightcrawler, firing a missile at Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf simply grabs the missile, 
and lets it go into the ceiling. Then he boom tubes out of there. The Flash asks, uh, what are we under? Gotham Harbor. And just when Gotham Harbor is about to flood the tunnels, Aquaman comes in and buys him a little bit of time to escape. And here are heroes and Alfred going up the ramp, about to load onto the flying fox and try to take on Steppenwolf. The unmasked Batman would be perfect for this scene. And finally, next to the Robert Pattinson, Bruce Wayne Batman from The Batman, this is the most recent incarnation of Batman. Reboot after reboot after reboot after reboot, and there's still another reboot to come. So let's take a look. Start with the face here. They kind of fix the side eyes, although it looks like my left eye is looking kind of to his right, but a little bit better than the single release. He's got the tall ears, the cowl has the nice personality from the film, the lips, the mouth, it all looks very good. He's got that unique sort of giant batarang in his chest. Mine has a sort of issue with the shoulder pads, they seem to stick out a little bit too far. I can probably heat them up, push them in a little more, that would look a lot better. He's got, I don't know, that sort of weird stuff, I don't know, it's like darts on his gauntlets. He's got the fins, double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. Cloth soft goods cape. Paint job seems to be a little better than the original release. Cape, just like the other ones, stretches out very nicely. Good looking figure. Almost all these are superior to the individual release. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Now for his height. Bottom to the top of his head. About 7.2 inches tall, just over 18 centimeters. Top of the ears, about 7.5 inches tall. Now for his articulation. Starting with his head, rotate side to side. You can go up about that far, down about that far. Not bad. Tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders on a ball joint. The shoulder pads are soft. I'll move out of the way. Goes up a little bit more than 90 degrees, quite a bit more actually. Up, down, around, all the good stuff. Butterfly joint, just like the other figures. Bicep cut. Double jointed elbows. The wrists rotate and hinged. His torso has got a ball joint. Rotate around, forward and back. Another one is waist. Rotate around, forward and back. The waist is much tighter than the torso. Between the two, decent range of motion. Legs complete as splits, McFarland style hip joints, rotations very good on him. And then go forward, about that much, back, not much. Double jointed knees, ankles, forward and back, rotate, tilt rock, and to articulation. Here's this new Robert Pattinson Batman, next to the original release. Figures are very similar. Head here. The side eye is a little bit less prominent. Paint job is a little bit better on him. Not a whole lot different, but just the overall look of the suit is a little bit better. The small paint differences can make a big, big deal. Of course, capes very different. They also made an unmasked version of the Robert Pattinson Batman. And just like the other Batman figures, I got an extra one of him, threw his head onto a suited body, and have a Robert Pattinson, Bruce Wayne, and civilian attire. Here he is, next to the SH Figure Arts version of the Robert Pattinson Batman. There's also a version from Mezco and Mayfix coming out, but damn, they're taking their sweet time to release those. And here he is, next to an older NECA, Edward from Twilight, also played by Robert Pattinson. Here are all the different characters McFarlane has made from the Batman, Catwoman, Batman, Riddler, and the Penguin. Pretty nice assortment. Here's this Batman, next to the Hot Wheels 110 scale radio controlled Batmobile from the Batman. I say, this is the best Batmobile from that film. Too bad McFarlane didn't make one. Then, next to the Spin Master 12 inch scale Batmobile. It's definitely not truly 12 inch scale, although it fits with the 12 inch figures. A little bit too big for the McFarlane figures, but not by much. Here's this Batman in the Batcave as workbench with Alfred next to him. And here's Batman on the top of GCBD headquarters with Commissioner Gordon at the Bat Signal. And then, riding his Bat Cycle through the streets of Gotham City. A side view as Batman continues to ride through the streets of Gotham. 
And here's Batman on top of a rooftop overlooking Gotham. Here's Batman taking on what appears to be a group of Joker thugs. Not sure if they're actually Joker henchmen or not. Here's Batman beating the shit out of that thug while someone else is recording him. I'm vengeance. And then Batman embracing Catwoman on the rooftop. Here's Batman sneak up on Riddler as he's sniping from the roof. And here's Batman and Commissioner Gordon walking down the hallway as a bunch of different law enforcement officers are looking at Batman. Some with disgust, some with admiration, just like in the beginning of the first trip. Now let's check out the bat signal. This is arguably the coolest thing about the set. Not only do you get a really cool, actually functioning bat signal, but it has interchangeable parts to represent each of the different franchises. That is so cool! It comes in a couple different pieces, and the batteries are included. And here it is, broken down as far as it can go, with all the removal parts detached. You have four different bat symbols that'll come to the bat signal. Michael Keaton version, Christian Bale version, Ben Affleck version, and the Robert Pattinson version. You may wonder, why is there no Val Kilmer or George Clooney version? They had the same bat signal as Michael Keaton. Now, like I said, the batteries are included. Simply has an on-off switch here. But the light is not that powerful. Still, it's a functioning bat signal. Turn it on. Hit the signal. Very cool. Here it is fully assembled. It has the Keaton bat signal on it. It's pretty much a standard Batman logo. It's got a square base, a couple of very small gargoyles here. It does have some articulation. Pretty nice. Put it down, flip it around, hit the signal, bam. There it goes. When you turn the signal on into a pretty dark room, it's just way too big. You have to put it really close up to the wall to actually sort of see the bat signal as intended. From that point of view, it's a little bit disappointing. I've had some other bat signals that are much better than this one. So as far as the actual action feature goes, it's pretty weak. Yes, it does shine the bat symbol, but you have to get it super close for it to actually sort of look like it's supposed to look. That is disappointing, but you have a bat signal with articulation, it has a base here, different fronts, light actually works, but if you want to actually have it sort of shining the bat signal onto the ceiling or side of the building, you're going to be a little bit disappointed. Here it is with the Dark Knight Trilogy symbol attached. Then, with the Batman vs Superman, Ben Affleck bat symbol attached. And finally, with the Batman, Robert Pattinson version attached. Very cool to have all the different versions. It would have been cool if they gave you the question mark version for Batman Forever, and then the sort of Robin symbol version for Batman and Robin. But, I am still very pleased with this thing. Very good idea, very creative. I just wish it functioned a little better. You could actually shine the symbol from far away. I don't know if maybe changing the bulb might help. I don't know if anyone's messed with that out there. As far as the actual execution goes, a little bit disappointing. I've had some better ones out there, but it's still so cool, diverse, and works with each of the different figures. Here are all the different bat signals that I have. I've got a ton. So, these two here, are from the Mattel Movie Master line, collect a build, the Dark Knight Rises Bat Signal. We have both variants, the Shattered Front and the Regular Front. That one has a fantastic lens, does an excellent job shining the Bat Signal onto your ceiling or the side of a building. This little thing, some sort of Chinese bootleg, someone gave it to me at work, but it shines the Bat Signal pretty cool. This is the old Mattel 2005 comic line, European exclusive Bat Signal Batman. This one here is from the Mattel Batman vs Superman Batcave playset. It doesn't actually shine. This is of course the new one from the six pack. This is the Mezco 112 collective one that came with Gordon. These two here are both sort of part of a book and Bat Signal combo pack. We have a larger one and smaller one. And then the last two over here are from the DC Direct Batman the Animated Series line. Whole lot of Bat Signals, whole lot of Batman whole lot of awesome. So if I shine the light on the ceiling,
from below. It's just a big giant blob of a bat signal. But if I push it closer up, yeah, it kind of looks cool. But I really hate how it just gets so fat from far away. The Mattel Dark Knight Rises collect a build a bat signal in their hand. They plan that one ahead. It's all about the lens. Now, when I turn that one on from far away, it looks fantastic, exactly like you'd want it to look. A very strong, vibrant, small bat signal. And if you move it really close, like I said, they planned ahead very nicely with this one. If you do it from really far away, it looks perfect. The strength of the bulb would only make a big, brighter blob on the ceiling. It's the actual lens that Mattel used that makes this excellent. Here's the DC Direct Batman the Main Series back signal. It has the same problem, way too big on the ceiling. And as you get closer and closer and closer, sure it looks good, but you have to be so close for it to be a reasonable size. Then the Mattel 2005 Batman comic line bat signal. From afar, it actually looks pretty good. Get a little bit closer, not bad. Then we have the Mezco 112 Collective version. That one looks pretty good on the ceiling from far away. Get a little bit closer, not bad. They did an excellent job with that one too. And here's this Chinese little bootleg bat signal thing. It's actually pretty cool. Kind of looks like the Dark Knight trilogy. The closer you get, the better it looks. But it looks decent from far away too. Here's that book and bat signal combo set. Once again, super large on the ceiling. It's bright and vibrant. If you get close enough, yeah, it's about what it should look like. But it has the same problem being way too big. Have a smaller version of that. Well, its batteries are dead and it uses some kind of weird kind of batteries I don't have. I remember that one actually being pretty good, although it's small and not very powerful. Here's a look at this bat signal on top of GCPD headquarters. We have Batman meeting with Gordon. Perfect diorama or prop piece. Here's a look at all six of these movie Batman figures surrounding the bat signal. A whole bat cave full of Batman. Absolutely awesome set here. Never thought anyone would make something like this. It is so cool. Only thing missing is Adam West. I get they're trying to do all the serious Batman films. But then what the hell is George Clooney doing here? That was so far from a serious Batman film. I don't really understand where the lack of love for Adam West is. If it weren't for him, Batman probably wouldn't even be around nowadays. Yes, if I were to pick six of them, these would be the six. But come on, throw me in Adam West. And while you're at it, I'll take the 43 and 49 versions as well. And then speaking of Adam West, here are these six Batman figures next to the 7-inch scale NECA Adam West Batman. This is the only 7-inch scale Adam West Batman out there, and he works okay with these guys. A little bit shorter, but it's cool to have them all lined up like this in a row. Very, very nice. Now let's talk him out. Next is some of the Batman figures. Starting off with some of the McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman figures. Here they are. Next to several older McFarlane figures. These Batman figures are all from the comics. And here they are. Next to some more recent McFarlane Batman figures. These are also from the comics. Then, with some more McFarlane Batman figures. These are from different various forms of media. And now, with some DC Direct and DC Collectibles Batman figures. Here they are. Next to some NECA Batman figures. And here they are, next to some Mezco 112 Collective Batman figures. Then, with some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse Batman figures. And now, with some Mafex Batman figures. And finally, next to some SH Figure Arts Batman figures. So overall, this is a fantastic action figure set. Cannot believe you can get all six of these guys in one fell swoop. Yes, the fact that I already have the Dark Knight Batman, the Ben Affleck Batman, the Bart Pattinson Batman, and even McFarlane's Michael Keaton Batman makes it a little bit less special, but still, it is really, really cool to have them all in one pack. Presentation is phenomenal. Of course, my favorite two are going to be the Falcom or George Clooney, mainly because they're brand new and really awesome. But if you take a step back, each and every one of these figures feels like an improvement over the original. The paint job is just a little better. The cloth soft goods cape is pretty nice on every one of them. I'm not necessarily a cloth cape guy, it just depends. Sometimes plastic looks better, sometimes cloth looks better. 
in this scenario. They all look pretty good. I'm probably going to have to say Val Kilmer is my favorite of them all. The face is fantastic. The paint job, the shininess of the armor, it all looks great. I do prefer the regular suit, and hopefully we'll get that in the future. I'm going to say George Clooney is my second favorite, but I'm a little bit biased just because those are the two that I don't have and are brand new to me. So, of course, they're going to be my favorites. Mal Keaton is a fantastic figure. Just have a little bit of issue around the neckline. The Ben Affleck one. Ah, oh, the face without the goggles looks great. It makes me really want to remember Superman, Batman. Christian Bale, paint job, cloth cape. It's just great. And the Robert Pattinson. I think the cloth cape really improves it. It kind of drapes over his shoulders, etc. They're all awesome figures. I'm going to give this set an 8.5 out of 10. It does have some stuff going against it. The bat signal, it's an awesome display piece, but the actual action feature is weak and disappointing. The bat signal does not shine the way I'd like it to. Not only is it not bright enough, but it turns into a big blob on the ceiling. Also, almost all these figures only have fists. Ben Affleck is the only one that has gripping hands and no accessories for any of them. It'd be cool if they each had their movie-specific batarangs and grapple guns. They could have easily done that, as most have already been released before, and some are still going to be released in the near future. Still, it's an awesome set, but where is the love for Adam West Batman? I find it odd McFarlane refuses to make him in 7-inch scale. They've made a ton of him at 6-inch scale. Hopefully, we'll get one to join the club here. Really want the Batman Begins Batman suit. Really want the Batman vs. Superman regular Ben Affleck Batman suit. I want these guys in all their regular suits in front of me, including Val Kilmer. And then, yes, I also want George Clooney in his end final suit. I want Michael Keaton in the Batman Returns suit, etc., etc. But honestly, what I would like the most is to have all these guys lined up in their regular suits. We have Keaton, Clooney, and Pattinson checked off the list. But we need Val Kilmer's regular suit, Christian Bale's Batman Begins suit, and Ben Affleck in his Batman Superman suit, and then a 7-inch Adam West to go with him. So overall, like I said, it's a fantastic set, fantastic presentation, really cool to see all six of those Batman movie logos next to each other. No one's ever released anything quite like this before. This is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.